Hey, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me on the launch pad in point two three with this very small looking plane. And the first thing you'll notice is it has the new Rapier engine. Um, this is in fact an SSTO, the smallest ST SSTO I've ever built because uh, it has one fuel tank. Um, and I've taken a little bit of oxidizer out of it um, because it will be using that for the jet engine. If you don't know, um, this Rapier engine is a hybrid. It goes from um, air breathing to rocket breathing. Rocket breathing? No, to oxidizer and liquid fuel. Um, so that you could, don't have to have two engines to go from atmosphere to vacuum. So I'm comparing this to one of my other SSTOs, which you will see after I have flown this to space. Um, and not back, because I don't really have time. <laughs> I'm just demonstrating the SSTO bit. And um, anyway, so I'll be demonstrating the differences between them. So I'm just going to launch this and talk at the same time. And before I uh, say anything else, there is another thing. These, um, what are these, uh, gears, um, they are, they now have, um, motors and steering, which is a cool feature. Um, yeah, so this is a little plane. I've kind of put not too much time into it because it was really easy. And I'm not trying to make it look too aesthetically pleasing. That's why it just has that, uh, big intake on the front of a flat, um, cockpit. Uh, yeah. So anyway, it'll take off much slower than that, but, uh, who cares? Um, one thing I have noticed about 2.3, um, or point 23, uh, um, one of the really, uh, a really bad thing, um, is although you do get better frame rates with mods like B9, I think, I haven't really tested it much, um, if I use I'm not sure which mod it is, but I think it's plug-in mods, so I had to turn off TAC life support, deadly re-entry, and heat aim, or uh, my frame rates would be abysmal. I'm going to try and figure out which one of them doesn't work, and then maybe do a video about it, um, but it was just a little annoying and a little worrying, especially because uh, in one of my personal saves, the other just the thing where I play not on the channel, I use all of those mods, and that makes uh, that's kind of what makes it sort of fun for me, because I kind of try to do this realistic thing. But anyway, this is already getting pretty high, and I, you can see I'm pointing 45 degrees up. That is kind of the best um, way to go. You point 45 degrees until you get quite high up in the atmosphere. Then you flatten out slightly, and about 20,000, you just kind of burn flat. Although with this, I reckon, I'm pretty sure this design flames out and has to switch over to rocket fuel at about 25,000, which is really good. Um, yeah, this engine... It's not particularly powerful, and it has a slightly lower ISP than jet engines, but because of it being both rockets, it's the most kind of overpowered thing ever. It's awesome, but I have my doubts, because I think it kind of takes the challenge out of SFCOs, as you can see, because um, it took me ages to get a working, decent SSTO that could take, say, a satellite to orbit, and now it's just kind of, yeah... And I know that in KSP, you can actually just get um, a kind of a fuel tank of this, uh, a fuel tank and a half, like this size, put a LVT something engine on it, put a probe on top, and that'll be an SSTO, but it kind of, I don't know, it feels a bit like an easy button, but, um, but the reason I like it is because it's career mode. I mean, you don't get it instantly, it takes a long time to get, and you'll already have jet engines and things, so if you want an SSTO before this, you'll have to work really hard in career mode, and I think that's awesome. And it kind of lets you have... It lets, it lets the developers make these things like this, that are so much better than the alternative, but because out of sandbox mode... Out of sandbox mode... I keep saying sandbox, that's... I don't know. Um, but out of sandbox mode, then there's more kind of task to it. But in sandbox mode, there's always going to be things that are better than those. It's like, if you're going into planetary, you're probably going to use nuclear engines. I mean, it's just another one of them. And I, I like it, but it just seems quite um, a little overpowered. But it's, it, yeah, it's good. And it does have a, its limitations. It doesn't produce any electricity. That's why I have an RTG. Um, it has not a huge amount of power. A slightly lower ISP than a jet engine. That's its limiting factor. Um, but yeah, it's... Oh, and I think the rocket engine ISP is not great. Oh, okay, it should be just pointing flat now. Um, yeah, but I think I'm kind of looking forward to using it for a shuttle. I've been trying to make a stock space shuttle work for so long, 
but the problem is space shuttle parts that actually look like space shuttle parts um, are like those big fuselages full of fuel, and those are really heavy. And I on my on my one I did in the past, which I did a video video about, um, I used a jet engine, but there's not really it doesn't look that realistic. And on my uh, other one, I also had an engine on the fuel tank, and I tried to make a realistic one where there were just engines on the shuttle and the external fuel tank and things and all that, but it was just like near impossible. And I tried draining the fuel, and I mean with tweakables it'll make it easier, it means I don't have to carry a lot of fuel up in the shuttle. Um, so yeah, that'll be good. I want to try and get that working, maybe do a video. And I'm already getting burning effects. One thing I did notice about deadly re-entry is the burning effects don't look good. They Obviously the burning effects are good because they burn your space plane up. Um, I haven't been talking about my flight trajectory, maybe I'll talk about it in the next bit, but this isn't a tutorial, this is just simply a comparison, because, uh, you know. Um, but I'm going pretty fast, and if you look at my map view, I've already got some speed up. I could probably just kind of point upwards now. Yeah. I think I'm going to... Wait, is that rocket engine yet? No. No. Um, what was I talking about? I freaking have no idea. Uh, oh yeah. With um, bur a deadly reentry, um, I'm not sure if it's just mine, but you don't get such nice looking deadly uh, dead uh, reentry effects. And my deadly reentry effects seem to be really undeadly. Like I've just brought an entire spacecraft back from the moon without a heat shield and everything's been fine. And it seems a bit like it's not doing, I don't know. It might just be my deadly reentry or maybe I'm just expecting too much of it, I don't know. Yeah, anyway, I'm gonna start burning up and I'm not going to change that to rocket engine because it will do it automatically. Um, ooh, I'm just going to stick here. Going really kind of high up. Oh, I'm going to have to hold it there with my. Uh, oh, there you go. Now it's switched over rocket engine. You can see it's changed color. Now I'm just going to point right up. Um, I don't think it gimbals either. Oh no, it looks like it does. I'm not sure. I'll click on it in a second after I've got my apple out. Do I risk it? Yeah, why not? Uh, yeah, gimbal. <laughs> to zoom out. Um, there are four. Okay. Yeah, so 75 kilometer Apple Apps. That was really easy. And uh, I took kind of a little, not quite enough oxidizer because it's surprisingly efficient. And got, I obviously did take into account how light this craft is. So, you know. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, all that stuff. Oh, and these thrust limiter things are cool. This is another tweakable. I mean, I'm not doing a review on the thing, but I just love the, how you can kind of tweak things in the VAB so that you don't have to change everything on launch. It's just kind of cool. I like this, uh, yeah, it's funny, I was going to maybe do a video on just all the things that you probably won't notice from looking at it, but probably heard enough. But, uh, I don't know, I think you'll have heard them enough and will be a bit bored and rather just see a, ra a rapier engine. Um, okay, we're coming up to the after waps. I'm going to burn prograde. And I have a huge fuel budget on this because I have used like not that much of it, which is ridiculous. Um, I um, I am really looking to looking forward to building a like a cargo SSTO. That'll be fun, and this will make it a lot easier to make bring more people into orbit because it's really hard to get payload into orbit with an SSTO without this. I find so maybe in my Eloy series I will just use an SSTO to get people off Kerbin into my station. Um, yeah, if you haven't seen my ELU base series, go check it out. I put a base on ELU. Okay, yeah, that's an orbit. Um, not brilliant, but I could fix that. And if I keep burning, I get that ah, well, this is out pretty high. Um, I'm a little wary this might run a little long, but I, I don't care. So yeah, if I keep burning, the oxidizer will be the limiting factor. But yeah, that's pretty high. And if I did that better, I could probably go to the moon or Minmus. But um, I'm not that good. Yeah, anyway. And if I brought some more oxidizer, maybe. Anyway, so this guy's basically marooned in space for a while, so he'll have fun with that. I'm going to get my old um, SSTO out on the runway, and we'll take a look at that. So I'll see you in a second. So you join me on the runway with my old SSTO, which you can see is called SSTO like a billion-ish, because I spent so much time with so many iterations trying to make one of these work. This one can actually carry a probe to orbit, um, like a really small one, it's probably a pretty inefficient way to take it, and it has various things like docking ports and RCS, so it's been a lot more manufactured than the other one. Um, but yeah, it does in fact work, and there are a bunch of action groups. 
I would like to point out on the other, um, oh, are we going? Are we going? On the other, uh, spacecraft, um, yeah, spacecraft or space plane, <coughs> there were no action groups, absolutely zero, um, because there just was no need for them, because that engine switched over automatically and I didn't have to turn anything off. I didn't even bother turning off the, um, intake because I just didn't need to, and it gets so high that, um, it basically doesn't need the intake. But anyway, this has two ram, jet, uh, ram air intakes and four radial air intakes, two turbojet, a toroidal air spike, and a whole bunch of fuel and wings, so it has plenty of lift. Um, it's also a tiny bit unstable, but, uh, you know, who cares? <laughs> but yeah, no, I was pretty proud of this. It was loosely modelled on the Ares 4A, but it is better than the Ares 4A because it can take small payloads to orbit, and it is just bigger. And <laughs> bigger is better. But no, um, it's, I feel as if there was something else, oh yeah, this is a, a properly 0.22 craft, because I'm probably going to call this video something like 0.23 SSTOs versus 0.22 SSTOs, but this was built in 0.22 and has had no fine tuning in the VAB or anything like that, it has been built simply to, um, to get a man and a probe to orbit, uh, there's no cross feeding I'd like to point out that each engine burns from its own fuel tank because that's actually a better system for this craft in particular. It is docking capable, so I could fly it to a station and then dock it to a station, um, maybe bringing spare parts or a tiny bit of fuel. Um, it can't get out of low Earth orbit, uh, low curve in orbit without a refuel, or at least not under my skill set, which, yeah. Well, I would say my skill set. Um, my skill set in planes used to be terrible. Then I built a few SSTOs, it got slightly better, and then I started playing career mode, and I've had so much more fun with planes in career mode, because you just start off basically, and you actually get something out of it from just flying around, because in sandbox, flying your plane around Kerbin, yeah, you get to see Kerbin, but you don't really get anything out of it, whereas with, um, with career mode, you get science from flying to the runway over there, as you can see, I've flown there a lot, um, and things. And it's fun to try and build a shuttle, although building a shuttle, as I said, is hard. But I'm working more on a stock shuttle and a B9 shuttle. And if I get a working, realistic stock shuttle, I'll do a video about it. If I get a working B9 one, I probably won't, because it will probably be quite similar to Scott Manley's from his Interstellar Quest series. Freaking awesome series. Um, yeah. Yeah, anyway. So, this, pl uh, this plane will... I'm not sure if it's much faster. I'd like to point out it looks cooler. Um, it looks more beefy and awesome and manly, but it, it's it's a lot of stuff for what it does. And considering I could get um, a single stage to orbit rocket with less than the rocket fuel I carry on this, it's pretty unimpressive. But as I say, it can get a man to orbit and a um, small satellite to orbit. So, you know, it has some use, but very limited. Obviously, um, I think so, uh, something they talk about at KerbalCon, um, which will make SSTOs very useful, is one day they're going to implement costs. That's why you see something costs a thousand credits or whatever. And they'll implement a cost, so you'll have to pay to buy things and build things and launch things. Um, and then you'll take on contracts to make money. So if you can make an SSTO, then, um, then you can probably be able to reuse the craft and just get all the money back for it, uh, with the exception of the fuel, obviously, but fuel's cheap in real life, it's like 0.3% of the rocket, um, or the airplane, or whatever you're doing. So if you can reuse the spacecraft, big win. So this would be more useful than a rocket. But now with a rapier engine, it shouldn't be too hard, although in Korea mode, obviously, yeah, then you have to unlock all the science and things. I am really looking forward to the future of KFP. I think it would just be awesome. And I do actually have to keep an eye on the air intake, because it can't go quite as high as the other one, even though it has all this fancy equipment on it. Um, and I have to switch it over manually with action group 3, I think, because 1 activates these, 2 activates this, um, the toroidal, uh, 3 activates, um, that, uh, activates the toroidal aero spike, um, deactivates the um, the jet engines and turns off the air intakes and then I've got a one that reverses that and that's just quite useful. Okay, got a 
pull up a little bit more because I don't want to be dropping. That'll ruin my chance of getting into orbit a little bit. I am carrying way too much fuel, but that means it has a huge cross range while returning. And because it has so many wing surfaces, it has a huge amount of lift and is very easy to fly. It is nice to fly. I haven't flown it around the space center. Um, I haven't like buzzed the tower or anything, but I but it, it is just quite nice to fly. But that other thing I was flying because it was tiny and had those big long wings, yeah, that was quite nice to fly actually. Okay, I'm going to start watching the thrust on both of these engines. When it starts properly dropping off, I'll switch over. It's nice not having to do that with the Raper engine. Okay, how can I do this? I want to get both thrusts in my window so it doesn't go into a flat spin. There you go. It goes into a flat spin. That's very, 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 very bad. Alright, what's it looking like? Not as good as the other one. That's a thing. Alright. Zoom out, zoom in. Okay, zoom in. Okay, thrust's really starting to drop now. ISP has gone down to 1,200. Um, yeah. These engines, actually, their max power band is kind of around, like, 18 kilometers, whereas the standard jet engines, those are, like, for lower atmosphere flight. These are for higher atmosphere flight, and the Rapi is kind of for both. So, uh, or space flight, that's the kind of everything flight thing, which is pretty cool. And this steroidal aerospike has a very high ISP. It has 388 in, I think it's 388 in vac in atmosphere and 300. No oh crap! Switch over. Okay, it started to flat spin then, and you saw I started to lose control because the FAS kind of held it in place. It wasn't that much of a problem, but now I want to be pulling up and getting my apoaps out of the atmosphere. Whew. Uh, and this is horrible to control. I'd like to point out. I'm going to use my RCS. Um, the other one was really nice, I just pointed it up and burned. This one I have to use RCS, reaction wheels, and everything to um, keep going where I want it. And I have to point quite heavily upwards. But I do have a lot more fuel, um, which isn't actually really a good thing, because uh, it would be better to do it with less fuel, like the other one. Now I think it will stay in place, as long as those RCS thrusters keep firing. I don't want it to flip over, that's a problem with something with this many wing surfaces because, um, well, various reasons, but quite heavily that, um, the aerodynamic model in this game is quite simple, um, and a little unrealistic, and the atmosphere is very soupy, I guess you could say. Um, Ferrum Aerospace will fix that, but I have difficulty flying in a Ferrum Aerospace because I'm not very good at flying, as you could probably tell by me almost going to a flat spin just now. Um, but the benefit of having RCS, I mean I could put RCS on the rapier jet, but uh, I wanted to make kind of a point of how simple that was. But the benefit of having RCS is I don't need any fuel for orbital maneuvers because I can just use RCS. Just like a space shuttle would just use RCS for its maneuvers because uh, we kind of had to drop off that tank. Uh, 74, and you can see it's a very slightly, well no, it's about a 4 degree um, inclination because it's not so controllable as the rapier. Um, as a rapier jet, I, don't, I haven't really called it anything. I think I called the jet a rapier, so I can just probably get away with that. But yeah. Um, what else is new? I mean, there's the whole science thing, like with the science labs, which you unlock surprisingly quickly because there's a much harsher cap on uh, data transmission. Um, and when you use an experiment in game, um, you use that experiment, and you can't use it until you clean it, um, clean it out as a science lab. Um, which I think is really cool because it makes. I saw someone put in a comment of a video. It take well. There goes the um, sense of achievement or something in uh, career mode. But surely, if it's harder, then it's more of a sense of achievement. And if it's more realistic, I think that's good because this is kind of the closest thing to a space simulator we have. Because it is obviously it has various imperfections, but it is pretty damn awesome. And I think uh, there's never really been a huge like decision that uh, the KSP devs have made that I've been like, oh god, I hate that. I mean, sometimes there's problems with SES systems, and sometimes you kind of want better aerodynamics and things, and you'd like things to go other ways. But I mean, they know what they're doing. They're making a pretty damn good game, and I think uh, this update can only improve it. Okay, let's point down, get more uh, bang for our buck, and I am using RCS just for a little bit of extra power. And because I did bring it, I might as well use it. I'm not going to use it for anything else. I don't have a state. What's that? Shuttle test. That was my really old shuttle because I rarely use this save. This is just my test save. 
Okay. There we go, that's an orbit. Let's see how I, high I can push the apple apps, and then I will probably end this episode. See, it's going to kick the crap out of a... Oh no, it might not. Uh, whichever one gets a higher apple up wins. I think uh, the rapier was like a one point something million. And this is going to get probably... Ooh, let's see. Will it get over a million? No. This plane has failed in every sense of the word, unless I use RTS, but I can't be bothered. Anyway. This has been a brief look at one aspect of um, the new update. If you haven't kind of played it yet, it's really awesome to play it and stuff. Um, it has literally just come out. Uh, a lot of people put videos up and said, oh, it's coming, it's come out now, but it didn't until like half an hour ago for me or something. Don't know when this will be update uh, uploaded, probably tonight, because um, I really want to get this uploaded, because that'll be fun. Um, but yeah, check it out, because there's a whole bunch of other awesome stuff. Um, which I think is all just amazing. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you like this video, uh, feel free to like this video. If you like this sort of thing and want to see more of it, um, uh, feel free to comment. I'm not sure what this sort of thing is, but I'm doing a lot of stuff right now. So, you know, uh, say whatever you want. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel and feel like seeing more of my um, more of my stuff, then feel free to subscribe. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.